What's up guys? I am sitting here in the shade in Florida killing time because uh, this place right here is supposed to be putting a windshield in the truck that uh, I dropped off yesterday and they're supposed to have it done by now. Well, it's not done by now. So I'm just hanging out. Let's walk around and look at some of these trucks. So over here in Florida, practically every place that you go into, you gotta have a mask on. So I don't wear the mask unless I absolutely have to. So I don't offend uh, a customer or something when I'm picking up a truck. That's just my personal thing. You know, everybody's different. But I feel that if uh, a virus is gonna take me out and my immune system is that weak that it takes me out, then just let it take me. That's the way I believe, you know. But anyway, we're gonna walk around and look at some of their trucks real quick. I like the red trucks. But uh, what happened was, I had a truck very similar to this guy right here, except for the frame was actually shorter. The suspension was a little different and it sets up a lot higher. But uh, what had happened was, I'm not going to show you the actual truck because it's in the back, but a rock flew up and hit about where that wiper blade is, and it cracked the whole windshield. So I'm just uh, holding on a uh, glass company to come and uh, fix the dang thing. So. When you break down for a company, the best thing that I could tell you to do is keep everyone in the loop. Keep your dispatcher in the loop, keep breakdown in the loop. If your company has a breakdown uh, part of the company, keep everybody in the loop. And uh, that's the best policy that you could go with right there. Huh, that's kind of different has this fiberglass little piece that pops out of the back of the cab. It's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, that's, that's crucial. Because uh, in the past, I've been screwed over a lot by uh, uh, breaking down. And one time I took and it was in the middle of the night. I couldn't get a hold of somebody. I had to get a hotel. Truck wouldn't start. And I couldn't get anybody to come out and jump it. And I had no way to jump it. So what happened was, uh, I went ahead and got a hotel, but I didn't know that I would uh, get screwed out of the hotel. Boy, this would be easy to hook to if I had to hook to it. Uh, that I'd get screwed out of the hotel if I didn't leave a message on Breakdown's answering machine. So, yeah, that was a, about a $120 mistake right there. So, that really, really, really sucked. So, after they stick this windshield in, they're supposed to have the thing in by noon, and that's in a couple of hours. After they stick that windshield in, I have a four or five hour window to deliver this truck. The truck is such a short wheelbase, shorter than that little fella over there, that it's squirrely as hell when I have my tow vehicle hooked to it. And uh, basically, I can only do 55, 60 miles an hour because it wants to swing me right to left all over the road, fishtail me. And it's a spooky little feeling and I don't really like it. So I keep my speed right around 60 or 55. A sweet spot is uh, 57 miles an hour. That's what I've been doing. But it's a it's a long road, boy. Let me show you an issue I've been having with this old Honda. So we're at the back right of the Honda, and I've been having uh, tire wear issues. So on the inner of the tire, right 
over here uh, it's been wearing a little bit more so my cheap fix is just keep rotating the tires rotate 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 and it seems to uh, help out a lot by not just wearing the tire all the way out on the inner of the tire so I've been having that little issue so here's a tire I took and rotate it to the front see how everything's leveled out and it the the tread is correct correctly depth all the way across I don't know if that's the proper way how to say it but it's done been said Jack so typically I carry these cans full of diesel but since I'm at the end of my week these cans are empty but you can see how many little rubber straps I keep finding on trucks. I just keep adding them. It's my rubber tie-down strap collection. Crazy, huh? It's a deterrent, so no one will steal my uh, fuel pump. I guess they could yank it out from underneath there. It would be a bitch, but it could be done. So I used to do that for a living and I never had a piece of equipment that nice and uh, back in the day I would really like to had a piece of equipment that nice. All my stuff looked like uh, it had been dropped out of an airplane at 5,000 feet. So back to the mask compliance situation. Uh, my wife is a nurse and uh, she has not contracted the uh, sweet and sour sniffles is what we'll call it and everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say that she hasn't contracted it I haven't contracted it neither one of us has gotten it I go to all the truck stops and I don't get it I wonder why so one of the secrets I have not contracting the sweet and sour sniffles is uh, basically I wash my hands I take and don't touch my food unless I'm at home and every time before I eat I wash my hands I've been doing this for years and years, uh, especially I had one of the kids uh, get leukemia back about 20 years ago and the doctor said his immune system was so low, if you don't wash your hands you could give him a virus and he could die. So that was a driving factor in hand washing for me back 20 something years ago and I've been doing it ever since and I hadn't uh, touched my food you know like on a regular basis when I eat a sandwich always like for instance if I went to Taco Bell I ate a bean burrito I would use the wrapper until the last bite and then I'd kind of like just chuck it in my mouth the last bite never touching the food so that's what I mean when I don't touch my food so, I mean, obviously, you got to touch your french fries. So, I wash my hands before, I, you know, I eat. It's pretty simple. You know, it's not overly complicated, but it keeps me from getting sick. And uh, that's, that's what I mean about this mask wearing. My mask rides typically on the floor of my vehicle. So, it's not going to do anyone any good for me to wear a mask or it'll ride in the seat of my Honda which has uh, you know paperwork that's been touched by everybody that's not gonna help anybody the mask is a flippin' joke the government or the CDC is pushing on everybody I saw a little kid not even two years old had a damn mask on walking out of the store the other day that's sending these little kids a bad message to be afraid in life and I don't you know I'm not gonna go off on a uh, religious rant 
but I don't believe in being afraid of stuff like that, if you know what I'm saying. I'm going to change the subject real quick. Uh, this is very important, and I hope you stuck around long enough to hear this. Uh, on these Honda CRVs, this is very, very important. It says in the manual to change your transmission fluid on these vehicles X amount of miles. You could refer to your own uh, manual in your Honda CRV and uh, just look that up for yourself. You know, it varies from year to year, I would assume. But for mine, it, it says X amount of miles. Okay, so I did that. I was starting to get slop between gears. The thing would downshift and shift up weirdly. And so I took my uh, vehicle into Jiffy Lube. A as I uh, was passing over the mountains in Colorado, it was acting crazy and I had smoke coming off of the transmission. So I took my uh, vehicle in there. They sucked out the transmission fluid and it was black. And it hadn't been that long since I changed it. So whatever the number is in the book of your uh, owner's manual, cut that in half if you do this type job. And then uh, I think you'll save your transmission. Your transmission will last longer if you cut that number in half. Think about it. You're towing your vehicle down the road. The transmission's still working, okay? The miles on the Speedo are irrelevant because you're towing it down the road. It's not tracking those miles. Are you tracking me? Because look, you burn up one of these transmissions to have my guy rebuild it. The guy, he's my friend. He's going to charge me $2,500 to rebuild one of these transmissions. I could pick one up for... Uh, $800 used approximately with 140,000 miles on it, it's going to run me about five, $600 to have a guy jam that in there. I mean, I'm on the low end, I'm looking at a bill $1,100 to $1,500 just getting a used transmission in there. So Jiffy Lube, um, you may have a place similar to this, but that's the company I use is Jiffy Lube. It's just like an in and out oil service. Uh, basically, uh, they charge around 150 bucks to do a fluid exchange, and uh, shit, man, I think it's worth it to do it about every three, three and a half, four months. So I'm on a new schedule of doing that, and right after they did that, that fluid exchange, I didn't do a full uh, uh, transmission flush on it, I did a fluid exchange. So basically a full flush would get all the old fluid out. So I didn't really want all the old fluid out, oddly enough. I just want a fluid exchange. And uh, because I was going to take it back in there and I was going to run it on that new fluid and then clean off the inside of the transmission and then have them do it again. And then it would be like, like a brand new transmission in my own head, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, I'm going to have them do it here in about a week again, and it's going to run me another 150 ish dollars. But uh, I'm just trying to make my tow vehicle last as po as long as possible and with as l little as breakdowns as possible to maximize my income. So that's all I got to say today. Get out there, change your damn transmission fluid. And uh, also, don't forget, get out there and make some damn money.